All right, let's see if it works this time, guys. I'm not sure it's going to. Let's see. Oh, it does. All right. So, yeah, I'm excited there. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, I think. Let's see what we're doing. All right, so this is something that I wanted to try uh, for a while now because there's so much writing and statistics is to pre set you guys up. So this was our open activity on Friday. If you guys remember, we talked about 25 pilots, we used the calculator to choose 15 male, 10 female. And first thing we talked about was to make an assumption. And you had to choose right or wrong, just based on the basic information we were given. And then what we did is we talked about, secondly, we talked about random chance and can, could it occur, let me see if I can still write, could it occur by random chance? I'll just call that RC. So could it occur by random chance is the question that I asked you guys. So uh, if it could occur by random chance, then how random is it? And we found out that... Uh, by random chance, uh, where are we at here? Eight, eight captains, uh, three males were chosen. So that could happen 17% of the time, which is still not really random. I mean, it can happen 17% of the time. So that's kind of where statistics is based, and it's kind of the idea. So what did we do? We did a simulation and did those things, but... Who wants to do simulations for every single problem you guys run into? So the whole idea is, is that what we're going to do is we're going to make inferences. So in other words, we're going to take something small like this problem with just 25 pilots, 10 female, eight, eight captains are chosen, five and three, and we're going to use formulas and statistics and different things, and we're going to to make a relatively good solution or find a relatively good answer that we can see that's beyond the data. So in other words, we're going to take something really, really small and we're going to apply it to the whole is the idea behind it. Okay. All right. And that starts with how do we organize and interpret data? So the first thing we're going to do uh, and this is Monday. We're going to do two of these, and I'm going to kind of get you guys going on, on to notes. Uh, I'm going to walk you through this, read pages two to four. All this stuff is on pages two to four. So when we, when we look at data, there's going to be broken up into two pieces, categorical and quantitative. Okay, so quantitative just means numbers. So... And I'm going to try to figure out why it does that big old round thing. But uh, I don't know. That's pretty interesting. To inter yeah, let me see if this still works. Numbers. That was a horrible way to write numbers too, by the way, guys. Let's see if I can do it again. Numbers. I've been out of practice on this. So that's numbers. That still sucks. Oh, well. So, so the idea is this. You need to focus on who is being measured or what is being measured. That's the key piece. And so how do you tell the difference between the two? Uh, categorical variables are usually like words, like stuff like states, zip codes. I'm going to tell you what, this cami thing and this little big circle thing that goes on, that's going to drive me batty. I'm going to see if I have to come up with something else. So states and zip codes. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think colors, stuff like that. Okay. So those are categorical variables. They're like descriptors kind of thing. Uh, and then quantitative variables are usually things with numbers like time. We measure time, things that we can measure, uh, scores of a game. It could be anything, number of infections, number of infections. If we want to bring science, that's short. Yeah, I'm getting better. Going to be ugly for a while, guys. Sorry about that. So those are the types of things that uh, category variables and quantitative variables are usually done as. So do we ever use numbers to describe the values of a categorical variable? Absolutely. And do we ever divide the distribution of a quantitative variable into categories? And this is kind of that gray area idea. So 
So the idea is this, and I think this is the same. I was moving around notes and stuff and trying to figure some things out. So you just, what we're, what we're talking about is like area codes. Area codes are a categorical variable. It breaks the phone numbers or the regions into categorical variables, but we, we use like 559 got to represent. So 559 doesn't mean 559 phone numbers. It just means it's a geographical location for the phones. So that is a categorical variable. So we do use numbers. We do use numbers to, to quantify uh, uh, categorical variables. Uh, and so, but we get things like age and weight and those types of things where we could do, we could, age can go both ways. You can go like this. We could say like age, we can make it a range. So now all of a sudden we're like, it's like an area code. It's like a geographical region. So 20 to 29 year olds, or we want to know the, the average age. Oops. I can't spell average. Apparently there's an N in average guys. Let me go backwards here. Um, uh, we want to know the average age. If we want to know the average age, then all of a sudden now that's a quantitative variable. So you got to kind of pay attention to what they're asking. Asking. So quantitative is really a measurement, a measurement. And that's what this last thing, it depends on how you want to use the data. Do you want to use it as like a grouping? If it's a grouping idea to where you want to know proportions of people and stuff like that, it's going to be a categorical. Uh, like this, if you want percentages. So like three out of four people, that is going to be a category. Okay. Uh, if you want an average, it's quantitative. So if we're going to get the average, and that's your two main pieces that we're going to be dealing with proportions and average. So that kind of tells you where we're headed in general. So there's a really good chart on page, uh, uh, page three of your book. It talks about some different things like that. All right, so let's move on to the next piece. So here's here's a perfect example. So we we've, we've got to be we got to talk about like individuals and different things of the list of, of the list. So so we have two things uh, on here. We have what are called the variables. So those are the variables. They're the they're the things that we put in here. It could change. So that's a variable. So we're dealing with columns or the variables. And then the individuals are usually the rows. So the individual state is this state, Wisconsin, right here. Look at that. I almost drew a perfectly straight line. No, I didn't. Not very good, guys. We knew a perfectly straight line for the individuals in this data set. So the individuals are Kentucky, Florida, Wisconsin, California, Michigan. You guys kind of get the idea. Okay, now, uh, what variables are measured. So the different variables here, and, and this is where this may get a little bit hard. I may have to go back and forth, uh, is the variables that are measured are the state. We have the number of family members. We have their age. We have gender. We have marital status. We have income. We have time traveled to work. And so which ones categorical and which ones are quantitative. So if we look at this, uh, let me change a color here. Uh, let's go to red here. So right now, since they didn't ask anything, I would say this is categorical. Age is usually categorical unless we're asking the average age, categorical, categorical. This would be quantitative because total income is usually a quantitative piece. Work time, this is usually a quantitative piece. Uh, age is usually used, like I said, to break things up into between like 20 and 29 years old, whatever. So for for uh, gender, it would be like female, 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 female. I don't know how many are there, 10? There's 10, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of 10 females uh, <clears throat> are... Uh, from these 10 states. I mean, there's all sorts of ways you can manipulate the data. So just kind of understand that the individuals usually go here and your variables are the different things you're going to measure go there. Uh, and then you just got to, again, uh, for quantitative, this was this would be, what are they measured in? Where'd my pen go? This is in dollars. 
this is going to be in, it looks like minutes probably. I don't think it's going to take you 20 seconds to get to work. And that is a horrible way to write minutes. That's horrible. You guys making fun of me yet on the way I write on this thing? All right, so let me go back over here. We talked about this. That's what I just did up there. So what is a distribution? I'll slide back down here. Oops, i got to watch my pen. This here is a distribution. This whole thing is a distribution. This is the distribution of 10 randomly selected U.S. residents. So let's kind of talk about that real quick, and we'll go back to this. So this is the distribution of 10 randomly selected U.S. residents from the year 2000. So that is a distribution. So that's the distribution of that data set. Okay? That's supposed to say distribution, which is pretty horrible. Okay, so that's the distribution of that data set. So what does the distribution tell us? It tells us what variables, what values the variable takes and how often it happens. Uh, it can be a collection of data or scores. Uh, remember, values don't necessarily mean numbers. For, for quantitative, values mean numbers. For categorical, values can be words also. So categorical values can be words. So if we go back up to this, this value for this column is a word. If it's female or it's male. This value here is married or never married or single or separated. There's different values you can assign to it, but not all values are going to have words or numbers. Okay, so let's see here. Display the distribution of gender and the distribution of the number of family members. So depends on how you want to do this. There's different ways you can do that. So let's just go gender. That's what I talked about earlier. We'll just talk about real quick about bar charts and dot plots. We've already talked about dot plots. So, uh, so if I'm dealing with gender, which has words, right? Words. And we already talked about, if you go back up there, there are six females. And there are four males. And I'll, I'll have to look up at the family members here in a second. So if we do a bar chart, we just typical old bar chart. You just kind of make a, a line here. And then you put, uh, make sure you label it male, female. And you'd want to spell the words out. I got them right there. And so we'd go up to five. We'd call that five. And so males would have. A bar that goes that far and females would be six and that's a bar chart you can see visually that four is bigger than six i have a tendency to write inside there so i can keep track of my numbers that's a distribution also so that's the distribution of gender from the census now if we go over here we're going to go family size family size so we always write what we have, and we've got one, two, three, four, five. I think it was six was the biggest one. So let's go up there. And so when we do a dot plot, it's really what it means. So we got two, six, two, four, three, three. So if we go back up there, we go two, six, four, three, three, I think it was four, four, one, four, let's see if I'm right, four, four, one, four, 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 one, oh, there's another three in there, okay, so there's a three, so that's our dot plot, we know that there was a family size from one of the states as one, we know it was two, there were three of them from three, there were four from four, those are the types of things we're dealing with, so now, Notice I stack them on top of each other. When you do with dot plots, you're going to stack them on top of each other. So they have limits because you don't want to stack 300 dots on top of each other. You'll never make it there. Okay, so let's talk about what the difference is. So that's, that's two ways to display data. Remember, it's categorical, numerical. There's just different ways. So we have what's called a data table, a frequency data table, and a relative frequency table. Okay, so let's just talk about uh, 
some basic a basic data table. Let me let me just do this one here. So let's do 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Oops. 25. Let's let's just do something like that, right? Uh and let's just put, say this is age. Uh, there's a good one on page four, I believe. It shows the columns and different things like that. So that's just a data table. Uh, let's do 28. Let's just throw one more in there. Okay, so that's a data table. That is your basic data table. And, you know, you'd, you'd be, you'd go like, you know, you make a table out of it draw your little lines in it if you wanted to but that's a basic data table all right so now now we've got a frequency data table so now we've got a frequency data table so if we have a frequency data table we have this idea let's say uh we're going to change this we have 20 to 21 and then we have 22 to 23 and then we have 24 to 25, and then we have 26 and up, okay? So then we just mark the frequency that these occur. So we look at this and go, okay, 20, 20 to 21, it occurred one, two, three times. You can put a number or you can do one, two, three, little check marks there, however you want to do it. 22 and 23, one, two, there was two of them. And 24 and 25, there were two of them. And then 28, 28, it's be one over that. So what we got? Five. You know what? That, it, that's all right. So now that's a frequency table. Okay. So we have just a data table. Then we turn the data table and we kind of break it into categories. So we use counts. Frequency means count. So we're going to count things. And then a relative frequency is a much better representation. So I'm just going to extend this table because a lot of times that's all you're going to do is you're going to extend the frequency table and we're going to write, we're going to write uh, the proportion. So this is a proportion for those of you. So it's a proportion. So I'm dealing with this word right here, proportion. And that proportion is a fraction. A proportion means fraction. Okay? So it's just a fraction. And so it is 3 out of 8 is a total. And it's 2 out of 8, which is a total. 2 out of a total of 8. 1 out of 8. Okay? Now, a so this is our relative frequency table. And that's using proportions. Or it's a percentage. Okay, a lot of people don't understand what 3 8 is. So let me change the color here, guys. Let's go. Let's go green. Let's see what it looks like. It's so crazy. So let's do this. So 3 divided by 8. If you did that in your calculator, you'd get 37.5%. Okay, that's a 7, guys. Sorry, 7. This one, 2 over 8 would be 25%. 2 over 8 would be 25%. And then 1 over 8 would be 12.5%. So a relative frequency, relative frequency is percentages. Why? Because everybody understands what 100% is. It changes it. Three of them doesn't sound that big of a deal. Two of them doesn't sound that big of a deal. But three of them is 37% of the total set of numbers. You guys understand 37% and the most pop the general population understands 37%, but not everybody understands what three means or three out of eight. So we use, we use relative frequency a lot more uh, than anything else that we've ever done. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So what's the most important thing when making pie charts and bar graphs? You need to make sure you label everything. You gotta include words and numbers you have to um, so 
are bar graphs are easier. Uh, pie charts you can only do when it's 100% uh, because, you know, a pie chart's a circle and a circle contains 100% of it. So if you don't have 100%, when you add up the percentages, you can't use pie charts. And we don't use these. It's just one of those weird questions that pops up every once in a while. We don't use those. So uh, what are some common ways to uh, make a misleading graph? Uh, in other words, like we go like there's this one and I've got this big old thing here and it says like uh, three out of 10 people. And then this one, this next one has like, uh, let's do 30. And then this next one is 28 out of 30 people. So they're comparing, they're comparing numbers. Let's say number of people, number of people that like, let's see, uh, Hulu versus Netflix, let's say. Okay. And so this is a Netflix, I mean, this is a Hulu ad. And Hulu said out of 50 people, 30 of them liked Hulu and 28 liked Netflix. So, but what's the problem here? This rectangle is much bigger than re that rectangle, even though the numbers match up. So when you're looking at graphs and stuff like that, you got to watch out for little tricks that they do. Things have to be proportional. Uh, they won't start things at zero. Uh, which messes things up. They'll make things 3D to make it more appealing, but it really doesn't, it doesn't, it's, they're misleading. So when you see stuff like that, make sure that it, it makes sense because, because humans are visual. So that's the, that's the basic idea guys. So uh, your first homework assignment is this one here out of the book. And I have answers in my book in the classroom if you ever need help. And don't forget uh, you're going to attach this to the slide deck for week one. So there you go. It's our first video. Hopefully it works. Oh, here we go.